A new Peppermint OS came out on February 2, 2022. It introduced many changes starting from the installer then involving the system base and so on. A first glimpse of the new Peppermint OS we have already given in one of our recent videos. In this video we will try to discuss the most important choices the Peppermint OS team has made compared to the OS previous version Peppermint OS 10 Respin. Stay tuned! The changes start from the very beginning. While the previous Peppermint OS version, Peppermint OS 10, was using Ubuntu Ubiquiti installer, the new Peppermint OS now uses Calamari's installer. The installation process was easy, smooth, and with no issues. It lasted about 3 minutes in total. It was much faster compared to the Peppermint OS 10 installation we did in January 2020. The next change introduced by the new Peppermint OS team is a base system. Peppermint OS 10 was based on Ubuntu's 18.04 long-term support release. The new Peppermint OS is now based on Debian, namely Debian 11 Bullseye. What it actually means for users, we'll see it during the video. The new Peppermint OS has maintained a tradition of simplicity out of the box. You don't get much after the installation. The first thing that welcomes a user upon the installation process is the Welcome to Peppermint app, which is a new thing the Peppermint OS team has provided. It enables a user to install a web browser since there's no web browser pre-installed in the new version of Peppermint OS. Apart from several browsers from the Debian repositories within the Welcome to Peppermint app, users can also install several notable programs including installation of popular Snap and Flatpak Linux software platforms and GNOME software store as well. The Peppermint Extras section is also offered, and it includes Peppermint themes, Peppermint icons, and Peppermint wallpapers from earlier OS releases. A new thing is an app called Peppermint Hub, which contains apps for system maintenance. That's another place where you can enable Snap, Flatpak, and AppImage software platform support, but more on that later. For us, Peppermint Hub is an equivalent of the Peppermint Settings application in Peppermint OS X, which was basically an LXDE desktop environment app. Another notable change in the new Peppermint OS is the Update Manager. Now, Peppermint OS comes with a terminal-based update app where you just need to leave your administrative password and the system will check for updates. In several previous versions, Peppermint OS was using Linux Mint's Updater, which is an excellent multi-purpose program suitable for system housekeeping and maintenance. Another thing that remained intact in the new Peppermint OS is the operating system's workflow. Classic and minimal. There's a panel at the bottom of the screen, with the system tray area in the right-hand corner containing usual suspects like calendar, volume, update, battery, and workspaces switcher. While on the left-hand side of the panel there are application shortcuts, including the one for Synaptic Package Manager, a classic graphical software manager for Debian-based desktops. The Peppermint OS team has also kept Nemo, the Linux Mint's file manager, as the default file manager in Peppermint OS. This brings us to another change in the new version of the operating system. Now, Peppermint OS is completely based on Debian and uses solely the lightweight XFCE desktop environment. Its previous versions were a mixture of the LXDE desktop environment, whose original team moved to the LXQT development and the XFCE components. And finally, there is Whisker Menu, a very popular application menu for XFCE desktops. It's somewhat different compared to the menu in Peppermint OS X, or even the favorites category offered a nice selection of default apps that many users would pin there anyway. A minimal set of apps is offered, and now, the Peppermint OS team has introduced a new category in the menu, Development, which wasn't there before. 
It's worth noting that GDebi, an app for installing programs distributed in .deb format, is also pre-installed, like in previous Peppermint OS versions. An important question for users is how to get software in an operating system. Let's see what's the situation like in the new Peppermint OS. First things first. Peppermint OS comes with no web browser installed, so we need to install one. Among the browsers on offer from the Debian repositories, Firefox and Chromium are widely used and popular, so our choice was Firefox. Just a reminder, in Peppermint OS 10, there was a specific app designed for installing one of several modern and popular browsers. The browser is now successfully installed, and it's Firefox ESR, meaning Extended Support Release Version, an old version of the browser. It is possible to install a newer ESR version of Firefox in Peppermint OS, but we would not recommend it to beginner users, because it involves the use of the terminal app and you really have to know what you're doing. To write documents and exchange them with other people, you'll need appropriate fonts. Let's see if installing MS's core fonts works in Peppermint OS. We do this in Synaptic Package Manager and the whole affair went with no issues. Now we will try to add additional software sources to Peppermint OS because, as you may know, Debian stable repositories offer quite old programs. You can pull things from Debian testing, but it's not something we would advise beginner users to try. Our aim is to add Flatpak platform support, which is getting increasingly popular these days. We've seen the option in the Welcome to Peppermint app, so we'll try it right now. We will install GNOME Software Store along the way. Another reminder, in Peppermint OS 10, users didn't need to bother with that. They already had Linux Mint's software app with full Flatpak support and GNOME software app with full Snap support at their disposal. Let's check the results. GNOME Software Store reports no application data was found, so we will reboot the system to see if the software support is installed. After the reboot, the operating system shows a fully populated software store. We'll check it if it works. We'll search for our regular suspect, Audacity Audio Editor. The program is found, but it's obviously from the Debian repositories and there's no Flatpak version, although we think we installed Flatpak support. The installation process was a breeze, and the program started as expected. To make sure that the Flatpak support is there, we look for KDEM Live, our favorite video editor. But again, the Flatpak version is not offered. That means we will have to add it later manually. The next step is to install an Office Suite. The LibreOffice apps are offered separately, so we install Writer first and foremost. Everything went smoothly and the program started with no issues. It's Writer version 7.0.4.2, a little bit old as of the time of recording this video, but still, it's from the 7 series. Now it's time to add Flatpak support. Usually, it's enough to install a single app from the Flathub repository and it gets incorporated into the system, so first we'll try it this way. For the video, we will test this by trying to install the Chromium web browser, but although it was offered to be installed via the software store, it wasn't possible. No more workarounds, we will open Flatpak's website and follow the instructions from there. You just need to click the logo of the distribution you want to add the Flatpak support to in this case, it's Debian, and then copy several lines, one at the time, into the terminal app. After that, all you need to do is to reboot the system again. Now, clicking the KDEM Live Video Editor in the software app reveals that it's offered both as a native, Debian repositories-based program and as a Flatpak version app as well. For instance, the GIMP Image Editor is also offered in two versions so, for the video, we will install the version from the Flathub. Hub. 
All goes well, the program is installed and starts as expected. Speaking of the system base in the new Peppermint OS, we have spotted another difference. The software and updates app can be found in the Whisker menu, but it won't start. To see the software sources, we had to open a specific file in the terminal app. In Peppermint OS 10, as is the case in other Ubuntu-based systems, the software and updates app enables you to manage software sources. And what's even more important, it's been an easy way to install additional drivers, if there's a need for them. Another important issue is if Peppermint OS's new version still supports the installation of programs outside official channels. We test this by trying to install a Vivaldi web browser. First, you need to pick up the installation file from their website. Since Peppermint OS is now a Debian-based operating system, we'll take the .deb file. It's offered the file to be installed via GDeb package installer by default, so we'll proceed with that. Meanwhile, we'll test if the app image format works properly by downloading the XNView MP image manager in that specific format. When we were offered to install Vivaldi's .deb file, nothing happened. The image manager's app image works as intended. When it comes to the Vivaldi web browser, we had to download the installation file again into the computer and open it with GDebbie within File Manager. Now, the installation was okay and the program worked as expected. We succeeded in getting the new Peppering OS more or less under our control. Let's see if we can personalize it. In the Peppermint OS previous version, users have many options out of the box for customizing their systems. They had quite a few desktop themes and icons, for instance, pre-installed. And several nice wallpapers, too. Now, you get the bare essentials only. And if you like fancy stuff from Peppermint OS 10, you need to install it via the Peppermint Extras application. This is precisely what we did. We successfully installed Peppermint OS themes, icons, and wallpapers. The next step was to change the workflow to make it a little bit different and modern in our view. The way we customize our Peppermint OS installs you can watch in one of our earlier videos. This time around, we'll just say that you need to add a DAW to your system added among startup applications. Then move the default panel to the top of the screen. And finally choose between many desktop themes and icon sets. To pick one of the additionally installed wallpapers, you need to change the folder from which the system will pull backgrounds. There's another feature that new Peppering OS has preserved, and that's the feature that has made Peppering OS stand out among other Linux distributions. It's about the app called ICE. That's an application that turns your favorite websites into desktop applications. A kind of. In Peppermint OS 10, I said several online apps pre-installed, such as Microsoft Office online apps, games, and so on. In the new Peppermint OS, there are no online apps installed, so we will show you an example of how ICE works. You need to open your web browser, then open your favorite website, copy its address, and then fill in the required fields within the ICE application, including pasting the website's address, choosing the menu category, then the icon for your app, and finally the browser which will open the new app by default. Now, the app is open in a separate browser window and behaves more or less like a standard desktop app. So, what's your opinion on the new Peppering OS? Is it recommended for new users? 
What about intermediate and advanced users? Tell us in the comment section down below. We hope you liked the video. Give us a share, like it and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.